think we're live. G'day guys, g'day, I think we're live. Can you guys hear us? I just got to do a quick check, check, check. Yeah, it, even though it looks like none of you are on, if any of you are, let us know. Yeah, let us know. Oh, we're working. Okay, just um, I just hit play on our um, Twitch. Okay, so welcome. Welcome to uh, Power Show 101 with Michael and Christian. Um, I That's Michael halfway out the frame, if you didn't know. Yeah, this is Michael halfway out the frame. Um, there's the, the computer in the middle of the frame, the most important thing, and it's Christian <laughs> on, the, on the other side. Um, so today, yeah, we basically have got a bit of a, um, obviously another 101. We skipped last week, didn't we? I can't remember. Did we? Yeah, we did. We, we didn't yeah, we had a meet up. stream last week. We had a meetup. Um, yeah, we had a meetup last week. Well, you weren't, but there was a meetup yeah, last no, week. There, yeah, no, there was a meetup. Yeah. So basically what today is going to be is a bit of a um, uh, catch up from what's happened last week um, in terms of, um, man, I think I'm just going to rotate this a little bit so I can get a little bit more in the shot. There we go. Um, so we can basically be a bit more in terms of um, what we're kind of going through with our project, where project is completed. So, and um, ideas for new ones. So um, this is actually presenting an opportunity, which I'm going to kind of get to in a moment with regards to um, the, the talk on Monday. So on Monday, um, I'm just going to go to streaming on Discord. Um, so basically, oh, I'm going to go and focus on the screen. So basically, uh, there was a whole bunch of different students. Um, I gave an introductory talk to, on PowerShell too, which was really good. Um, so basically, we just went through the basics. So just the PowerShell pipeline, PowerShell verb noun, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, very kind of nostalgic moment there because that computer right there, that seat right there, that was my seat back at, back in the day. Um, so it was kind of weird being me being up the front, kind of like teaching the class. Um, but it was really, really good. A um, lot of good interest from it. Um, so, and that there is a bit of interest being generated for the live streams. So, um, what I'm probably going to be doing is within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing a, um, I'm thinking of basically, I'm, I'm going to work out a way to do this. I'm thinking maybe we create a discord channel or something where like we can get in. Cause I know that you can do like voice calls with discord and things like that. So my whole idea is that we get like everyone in on discord, like discord call and basically I think like you can chat to people or something um, and we can get all the videos up and then I can kind of have that as a window um, and then we can kind of have like our lessons with everyone in channel so it's a little bit more um, out there in terms of um, you know what, what's been going on but I'm thinking um, we can definitely do that but we're going to definitely need a new project so that's going to be something also we are streaming on Mixer now so um, I've added myself as a Mixer user um, so basically, yeah, g'day Mixer guys, if you are watching this, um, hope you stick around. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, is there anything I've missed or? No, I yeah, don't okay. think they have. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so, um, a lot of really good feedback on Monday. We had, um, there was a, there was a fairly large class, lots of technical issues with, um, with any sort of government department and their love of group policy, which, um, it just, I, I just, yeah, I don't understand why. It, it always brings um, a, a chuckle to, uh, for me whenever I hear an IT guy say they had technical I'll, difficulties. It, it's just so many issues that we had, which basically caused... Um, it's just... Like, like there's... you Like, there's actually... it's the, Looking at the way that they have it implemented, and I was just thinking, there's so many better ways you can actually do group policy. Like... It's just, it, it's kind of like this, the, the group policy is basically, you know, it's kind of gone from the days of um, 2000s and things like that, year 2000 and 2010, where basically you had your map network drives through scripts and, you know, whether it was a very funky VB script, but most of the time it was just a simple batch script. Um, and you had all, yeah, but like, I can tell you now, um, that didn't never stopped me at the TAFE computers. It never stopped me. Um, the, the library computers had administrative access because you needed to be able to install dri device drivers. So if you plugged a USB in, you could install device drivers. And what happened was um, there was that simple requirement allowed me to do things and get a circumnavigate group policy. And well, I mean, they've left 
PowerShell enabled. Well, so. that's exactly right. If PowerShell is enabled, you're pretty much you've got free reign anyway. Um, they if if they don't reign in the script execution policy, you're pretty much like, yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah, g'day viewers. Um, hope you stick around. So yeah, today's um, we're just going to be doing a recap of, um, basically what we're gonna was we're gonna do a recap of the meetup last week in terms of what we've actually de demoed. Um, so we can actually see power, um, the remote execution bot in action, which is really, really cool. Um, and also basically we're just going to be going through, um, our pester tests, things like that. So, um, as you can see here, um, we've got our functions. So what we can do here is we can just go, we can start our function. So host function start. Um, it also hope helps. No, I'm right. Um, Also helps if I know how to spell and put my words in my right order. I know English. Um, so what we got here is we've just basically got some Azure functions that I've got loaded up now, and this is just running in a debug. Um, this is actually has I've deployed this to Azure. Um, I just haven't been bothered to fix it um, because there is some things I need to fix. Um, one of them is that in the C sharp service, um, this is the reason why we have I'll say unit testing because the unit testing wouldn't have caught this anyway. Um, the way, yeah, it basically, you know how you have URL and you have your key values. So if anything after the question mark is your key values. Yeah. Um, those key values that were getting passed were basically completely like, um, I was assuming that the I was just going to get a basic URL and then the service would then append the key values that it needed. But when I went to get the function URL in Azure, I actually got a full URL with key values. And so what the service will do is it'll actually append an additional thing. Like it's, I'm so lazy, but um, yeah, so that's fun. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. But anyway, so what we can do now is, so we've got our, um, we've got our functions um, running. So this is basically, yeah. So what we can do is we can fire up our service. Um, so as we got a really, really awesome service name, which is called service, I think. Oh, server. No, it's not. Uh, what's it called? Service one. <sighs> Riveting. Um, so what we get here is, I'm just going to set it to manual. Um, so what's this doing? We're actually going to see this start up. And what we're actually seeing is if we go back to the whiteboard here, um, if we can actually, oh, damn it, I don't want it to go full screen. So remember, this is our service here. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, you're going to see it polling this side of the Azure functions. So we're going to see it polling. Hey, do you have anything for me? Do you have anything for me? So what we should see here is some polling happening when it decides to get around to starting up. Um, unless it decides it's... Yeah, there we go. So it's basically just done its first poll. It's going, hey, do you have a job? So we can actually see, yep. And it's saying, hey, I, I'm a computer. Do you have a job? Do you have a job? Do you have a job? So now it's actually polling. Every five seconds it polls. It goes, hey, do you have a job? Do you have a job? Do you have a job? So. It works. It works. It's polling. So we got, so, yeah. G'day, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it seems we are, Glenn. We are, we are there. there. We are there, mate. We are there. Um, so, actually, I've got a question for you, Glenn. Um, who would I have to talk to about... Um, MVP certification because that's something I was um, wondering um, I kind of like I don't know really who to talk to MVP certs okay why do I get the feeling he's going to come out with a, a, a snippy one liner here yeah he's like you MVP <laughs> um, so what we um, it's like it's like I fail English that impossible <laughs> I think it's bad enough it's that it's a political process. Mm. Um, so anyway, so basically, um, you've got my awesome um, VM demos. Um, you or someone needs to nominate you. Okay. I'm guessing that there's not really much, no reason for like, there's no, let's say no reason, but um, many peeps don't have MVP, which deserve it and vice versa. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah, that that's basically what I'm getting at. I was wondering at as well because I do think there's a few people out there that should have MVP certs, and then others are like, um, who just don't really, yeah, 
they shouldn't. Anyway, um, anyway, anyway. <sighs> All right, so, um, so what we're going to do here is, what are we going to do? We're going to open up L Scripto. So I'm only doing this in here because um, I'm just super lazy. Yeah, they stopped the nominating MVPs. I'm guessing they're redoing the MVP certifications, or they're doing something there. So anyway, well, it makes sense after they've released Zoom and all that. No, they've um they had it like I saw it I saw it there a couple of weeks ago, and then I thought, and then I checked it again today, and I was like, like, but anyway, anyway, um, so uh, um, we're still waiting for um. Uh, the equivalent of MSD and double A. Hmm? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in PS yeah, land. Me and PS land. Well, they called, they, they went from um, the uh, MSD and double A, which was the Microsoft account they gave to students, so they get the, um, the background into Microsoft and all that, to... Uh, imagine to Azure Dev Tools for teaching, but we still haven't gotten access to Azure Dev Tools for teaching. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and by the time you finish, you're going to have your subscriptions going to terminate anyway. Yep. Hang on a second. I've got HTTP send job, that HTTP start be, job, um, HTTP trigger. Why am I missing? Uh, receive job and request job. Why am I missing some? Because you never updated it? I did. Hang on. Give me two secs. This is why we run tests. To make sure Marco codes the best. That was really super lame. Oh, well, I didn't up, want to right say out. anything, but considering it's your own words, yeah, oh, that, that was, that was super lame. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a uh, HTTP, um, send job. Just going to run that integration test and see how we go. Uh, okay, while well, we're waiting on that. I'll just run back down here. Like it's doing, it is doing um, a request, even though it's not showing up. That's fine. I think, I think there's um, shenanigans happening again. So shenanigans are happening everywhere. Um, it doesn't matter anyway, because we just need to get that one and receive job. So uh, I just need to type in receive. Uh, was it receive job? Yes. Is it receive job? Yes. Uh, e E V E. Bips, I before bips, E except bips. after C. Oh yeah. I before E. Yeah, I is before E. Except after C. Is that? Did I spell it right on that side? I didn't. Oh, well, if the typo is still out, we're just going to have to leave it that way. It's going to have to leave it. Oh, actually, it wouldn't take that much to rename, but yeah. There is a QI episode. There's an entire QI episode. Oh, really? Oh, man, Michael Lombardi would, like, absolutely murder me. Yeah, so eight tests passed. So I think that the function's still working. It's just being a bit wonky. So um, this just quickly tests the entire process, but... Uh, if all eight tests pass, then it should be fine. Um, so, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to do this. So, step number one, we're going to send a job, all right? So, yep. so we're going to say, uh, send PS. also helps if I actually run it and load it into memory. Uh, cut that, run that. Yes, run that run that, paste that. So, so if we go, uh, hang on, let me just bring this up now. So everybody can see this, start PS remote job, computer name, pocket, rocket, um, PowerShell script. So, um, 
So like, who am I? Who am I? Just returns um, what like user computer context name. Yeah. Oh, just returns your user context. Okay. Um, and then we can actually just pop in the send job. Just catch those string just to be. Um, you're missing it. Yeah, missing an H. So that'll run. Uh, status is false. Fantastic. What did they break? Now the question is, what did they break? I'm just going to run the send job integration test. That's the test you just ran. Passed. Did I run? Was it send? Oh, a start job. That's why. So what we can do here is we'll actually like remember what we do because um, yeah that passes. So there we go. So basically we got a status, we've got a grid, um, we've got a queued. So now we have a grid. What we can do is grab that grid and then we can go get PS remote job. Uh, punch that grid in, like so, put the URI in, um, chuck that in, there we go. So that's basically sent the job over, um, executed via the service, so we're like, okay, that's pretty boring, you know, that's, that's pretty meh. So all we can do, um, let's get something a bit more substance. I reckon that's fair, fair enough. Yep. Um, so what we can do is we do that. So again, we got a new grid. Um, it looks it's it's like this something such a simple like one liner, and then the amount of work that we had to put oh, in yeah. to get it to like run is just ridiculous. And then they up. Ooh, okay, it's in a, it's an empty string. It's probably because it hasn't finished running. There is it's it's not perfect. Put that way. There we go. So it's basically returned um, all the processes. So we can actually um, what we can do there is um, I don't think it's in existence anymore. Oh no, it is. So we can actually just put that as a variable. Um, and it's it's serialized as a PS object. So if we go get member, we can actually. Okay. What? That should be a PS object. Why is that a system top stray? That is so random. That is super random. So that returns as a PS object. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do this. Because it's, yeah, dot output, convert from base 64. Could it be because you typo receive? No, no. I think it's due to the fact that it's how this is being serialized. Um, I'm just going to do something here. I'm just going to do this. Rerun that. Uh, so if we go get PS Remote Job, have a look quickly here. So there's our output here. You can see um, it's base64 encoded. So now it's string. Wow. Wow. It's a PS object, but it's not a PS object. How, like, okay, what I'm going to try and do. That's not a JSON object. That's a JSON object. That's JSON string right there that it can deserialize. It's just compressed. But if it's converting from JSON, which it should, it should convert back to a PS object. That's pure string. Yeah. 
but what I'm doing is I'm converting from JSON. JSON should de uh, serialize it as a uh, PS object. Um, you sure? How did you encode it at the start? It's like, oh, it's encoded as base sixty four. No, no, I mean in start PS remote job, mm. you would have given to convert two commands. What order were they in? That was just um. So I've converted to. It's actually it's going to be done server side. So server side serializes it as JSON and then it converts it into um. um base sixty four. So, um. So UTFA. Base sixty four. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Okay. I know why. I know why. So the reason why that's happening is because I made a boo-boo. Um, not there, but here. It's... That's fine, though. That's completely fine. Because what we can do is we can convert that bad boy um, you know what we're going to do? We're going to fix this. We're going to make this better. So what we're going to do... See, the, the thing is, is that the um, the functions in that don't need to change. Um, it might break all the tests, though. Probably. We'll find out. So what I'm thinking of doing... Um, is... If we go back to wherever I put my code... Uh, get Brispark demos, PowerShell website demo, no, servers, PowerShell servers. So what we can do here, so this is the problem here. Um, so if we go to job, this is the issue here. So what we can do, you can't write that as that string, can you? No, but what I can do... I've always wanted to do this. It's just something that I've always wanted to do is convert to Cli XML. Um, I quickly need to jump into a uh, mess around engine so I can kind of mess around. Uh, yeah, Shift F5, that's fine. Uh, process. So if we go get process, so what I'm doing here is I'm looking at, um, I don't want to, damn it, can I export as Cli XML? Oh wow, rehydrating objects across an API, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, this is the thing is, if you actually look um, about, if you actually look at how WinRM does it, this, it actually does it using CliXML. All of the, um, everything's transported using CliXML. Um, very interesting. Um, I thought I'd be able to export, convert, oh, hang on, I wonder if there's a convert to... Yeah, soap is bleach, yep. <laughs> Let's convert to XML. I don't want to convert the object to XML. I want to convert it to Cli XML. I have to go to trusty old Google. Uh, Love that. You call it Google, but it's actually it's duck, 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 duck. Um, So what I'm going to do quickly here. Correct the XML version of RAM. Stores it in a file. I don't want to store it in a file. Well, you're exporting it, so... Yeah, I know. That's the problem. I don't want to store... I want to make a Cli XML object from it. Ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. I wonder. I wonder. We only wonder. Sorry. Um,
Command similar to storing XML, convert to XML, returns XML, so you continue the processor. You can use import Cly XML. Yeah, but I don't want that. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so um, what's the difference between XML and Cly XML? Cly XML, um... Oh, mate, mate, this thing is like dodgy as all hell. Um... We uh we learned about SQL injection in um class the other day. It was an interesting topic. Uh, yeah, our, our teacher also um he teaches uh, cyber security as well, so he's always got these little asides which are well awesome to listen to. Great stories. Okay, okay. We need to actually create it. But that's fine, that's fine. Alright, so, um, yeah, that's the reason why it's not working. But that's cool. Um, I think what I can do... Um, hang on. Before we try something... I'm not the biggest fan of exporting to XML. Off topic. Hack yourself first, course. <laughs> um... First, I've actually heard of that. Now we're going to see what happens here, which right now it doesn't think. G'day, Anthony. How are you going? Indeed, I have. Um, I honestly think that this is going to... Um... My thanks to you, Glenn. Yeah, good, good. Um, I don't think convert to XML is the most speediest of the um, conversion processes. I don't think so. Oh, that's a freaking pain in the backside. Oh my gosh, really? Alright, I'm just going to put a depth of one because I want to see how long that takes. Yeah, that's what I've just done. I just put a depth of one. Because by default it's a depth of three, but I was like, nah, it should be alright. Yeah, nah, it's not right. So it's probably, I, I'm, like, I need to kind of measure the object. Uh, he, he jinxed you, you can't speak. Did Christian show you his new toy? Yes, yes, I did. Oh, I did. 48 port switch, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Layer 3 switch, which is great. Is it POE? Um, yeah. Is it white? Like it's got the white part? POE? Yeah, 48 port POE. That's probably the reason why it's so chunky. There you go, guys. Just so you can see. You gotta flip it up the other way so you can see how deep it is. There you go. You can beat someone with that. Alright, alright, alright. So what we're gonna do... Um, so what I was thinking you could do here is... yeah. Hey, uh, that's actually something I was kind of thinking about the other day, um, Glenn. <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. But it works when you want to host a LAN party. Oh, man. Christian's hosting the next LAN party, that's for sure. I'm not doing it at my house. <laughs> I'm done. Well, I can't exactly do it at mine. Oh, I could just... We'll do it at Glenn's place. Oh, uh, yeah. Just crash his house. 24 people. Hey, mate, we're bringing our computers. Make sure your internet's up to scratch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Glenn doesn't look like he's got a problem with that. Yeah, I don't think he has we. a problem with that. That's fine. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> mate, as long as there's no group policy, I don't care. Oh, look, one meg is generous. Well, yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty serialized. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, that's a nice, I don't know how an SQL row is going to deal with that. All right, I'm just going to leave it there because at the end of the day, I don't particularly want to like fix that. It's, um, she broke. It's, it's fubid. I think what I can do there is I think I can just, um, it's actually probably better for me to mess around with this, um, invoke the wrapper somehow and then convert that to, um, actually just convert that to JSON without, without stringing it. Um. What do you expect to 
I should expect immediate results. Like, I've got, like, you know, high-end computer. This is, like, performance is only for the week. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm an immediate kind of person. I can be lazy with my code. No. At the end of the day, though, like, even with a depth of one, I actually, that was a ridiculous, like, Cli XML is so much faster as well. So, I think at the end of the day, though, it really comes down to how, um, how old mate is serializing, um, how, um, how PowerShell is serializing it. So, I do think that there's probably um, faster ways to serialize it, aka using asynchronous ways, uh, asynchronous methods. But anyway... Anywho, because so the interesting thing to take away from all of this is that WinRM, it PowerShell is, Cli, is serializing via Cli XML. So at the end of the day, though, there has to be like that is how um, object data is being transmitted. So there's got to be some like there's got to be a faster way to serialize. Hundred percent. That's what I mean. Like there's got to be a faster way. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, I'm just going to stop the service, uh, service, obviously super secure service. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean this way, they don't actually know what it's called. Yeah, I know. Right. Like security through obscurity, the best. Um, so basically I think, um, that pretty much concludes this. So I'm thinking what I'm going to probably do is we've obviously got a whole bunch of new people who are probably going to want to jump in another course. So we're going to try and get a new, um, project and I'm kind of a bit of out of ideas. I was kind of thinking about maybe doing the rest, um, the Phillips Hue, but then I was like, oh, it's kind of boring for me. I kind of want to do something different. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm actually not entirely sure. I was thinking about doing the aimbot, but I do think that's a little bit too advanced, um, for the time being, especially for beginning student, beginner students. So what I'm thinking I might do is we'll probably, when we kick it off again, it'll be specifically focused around Active Directory um, and we'll be basically building and automating um, that entire process. So Excellent. Yeah, it'll be focusing on that. But anywho, let's actually go and do something else because chatbot for AD operations. We could do a chatbot using PS, uh, um, a PSBot, but the only reason why I don't particularly want to go there yet is because I kind of want to, like, I was kind of thinking about it'd be a good idea to build the foundations first. So basically, you know, actually, this is how you build a main control using PowerShell. This is how you actually add a whole bunch of users um, using PowerShell. And then obviously going from that, then building it into, um, yeah, then you can actually automate it through Discord. Um, that would actually be pretty cool. Not even Discord, just from a um, Twitch chat. So it's like, I want a new domain controller <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> and then my VM. Yeah, you'd hate to be in a, a Twitch chat, you know, watching something like this, mm. and all of a sudden it comes up with, you know, anyone wants a new domain controller? Yeah, I want a new domain controller. Just creates a new domain controller randomly. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm looking at my hypervisor, and then I've got, yeah. Let your builders. Let your users build DCS. DCS, sorry? I don't understand. Or are you talking DSC? Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, DCs. Sorry, yeah. when you saw DCS, I abbreviated. When I was, yeah, so you yeah. mean capital D, capital C, lowercase s. Uh, I get the fit now whenever I see Postbot. <laughs> I get the feeling Glenn means me. <laughs> Alrighty, alrighty. So let's jump back into. Um, just you should put a U instead of two O's. Just saying. I speak real good English. English, mate. English. I fail English. That impossible. Ah, uh, yeah. My my teacher, she she teaches us in English good we. Um. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a bit of a play around. Um. With PowerShell. So. That is impossible. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do is, um, we're not going to like, we're going to basically just go back to core logic because yep. I think that's, um, I'm just going to go back to C temp because C temp is, I think it's going to be good for everyone back to basics, um, at the same time, um, on possible PS1. Alrighty. So. Um, I'm going to get you to drive. Um, you're going to basically do majority of the driving on this. Um, we're Wonderful. basically going through 
Um, I'm also going to move the camera so I can actually stay in shot and not worry about getting like face cut off because I know how Glenn enjoys the show. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I can imagine if he's like live streaming this and he's at work and then like he's got speakers on and someone's just like, yeah, immediately to go to HR. Um, so basically what we're going to be working on today is I want to kind of step back into flow control um, and talk about um, different bits and pieces. Dear HR, Michael did it again. <laughs> Um, so what we're going to Glenn enjoys the show. <laughs> I swear, I swear it's not ASCII porn. <laughs> um, 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 okay, okay, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to be focusing on um, just our, we're going to go back to basics. Um, I'm going to get you to write different commands. I'm just going to rattle off different things and we're just going to using all our different statements. So. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using a bit of where object and then yep. we're actually going to be using where method. I'm going to show you a really cool thing with PowerShell. What we can do is where we can basically, um, PowerShell can actually put um, two outputs. You can take two outputs and put them in two different variables in one line. Okay. So it sounds kind of weird. In a way. But yeah, let, sounds kind of weird. Yeah. I'm sure I'll get it once um, you show it to me. We're also going to use the where method too because... Um, I've been using the web method quite a bit and I love it. So um, what we're going to do firstly is I want you to get me all the processes um, and we're going to start getting really funky now. So firstly, do you want me to save it as a variable? Um, well, this is, we're going to actually start dicking around in it. Um, so what I'm going to do is you can just jump down to the console um, and we're going to just start messing around. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to, get, we're going to learn how to spell. Um, that'll be a good start. Just um, copying you, you know. Oh, savage is all hell. All right, what we're going to need to do is I want to write a... Uh, we're going to write... What we're going to need to do is we're going to get a whole bunch of different um, processes. So we're going to look for code, um, and Discord, and DLL host. So I want you to filter by those. It's 4.30. Okay, cool. We'll, be right, we'll basically be, I'll be finishing off at about five, quarter past five. And then I'm going to be chucking my running gear on and then running over to office works as quickly as I possibly can so I can go get um, my wireless Miracast device. So um, also while Christian's doing that, I'm hoping that I can do a stream on Friday. So um, Monday didn't work out too well because of technical um, issues, um, but basically Friday is the uh, is the thing. So remember how when we use where object, um, what we like, couple, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be writing it out in full. So what we're going to be doing is using script block, yeah, and we're going to be using dollar underscores. So what does dollar underscore do? And tells you to refer to the above object. Yes, it's, it's the current object within the loop. So what we're going to be doing here is let's go back to where object. We're going to open us um, uh, curly braces. Curly uh, brace, yep. Yeah, your keys are upside down. No, they're not. They are too. No, they're not. Yeah. Because if they're upside down, then the keyboard layout will be wonky. No, no, no. You, you don't understand. I mean, normally the curly brace is at the top to say that that's what you put shift to get to. But that's like... Did you go like some like retard scores? <laughs> Shall I get any other keyboard ever? <laughs> Hang on, go grab that. Okay, what? okay, so open curly brace. <laughs> I'm now intrigued because I'm just like I've never. I'm just. That's the other way around. But well, there you go. So that's me. I'll take that one. Um. So. Um. So basically, yeah. So dollar underscore. So what are we looking for? So I'm gonna get you to start troubleshooting. What are we? What are we filtering on? So if you're not sure, this is what I mean. Well, um, we're filtering on process then. Are you sure? Because like, okay, this I'm just going to show you exam. Like this is like yep. how I how I stuff around. So if I'm not sure, first thing I'm going to do is use get member. I'm going to spell it out fully for everyone because um, not everyone's going to be fully across um, this. And it's going to show me all the members. Okay, so we can see we've got a whole bunch of alias properties, which is really interesting. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of methods, and we've got properties here. So we've got the properties. Handle modules, um, process name. Okay, let's have a look at that. Um, let's process name because I just. Um, so if we go again, 
And what, do I, what I'm going to do is if I'm going to mess around with it, I'm basically yep. just going to go select first one. So I'll select object. So what does select object do? Uh, select object. No, this oh. selects an object. Well, yeah. Um, and then I'm just going to get first one. So first is basically just going to be the first one. Yeah. So it's just a quick and dirty way to start messing around so you can start working out the logic that you need. So, okay. um, so as I said, I, I just switched. Um, I'm going to switch back to integrated console. So you're back on where you are. So if you're not sure, like, yeah. So don't be afraid to jump in and just start messing around. This goes with you, Anthony. Is you don't, don't spend ages guessing. Basically, um, the, the, the key thing with it is if you're not sure to be able to develop tools to be able to kind of um, um, to be able to troubleshoot what you need to find. So in this instance, process name, and what we're looking for is we're going to be looking for um, code, code um, Discord, and DLL host. And was. DLL host. So what are we going to do there? Um, Remember, if, you, if you're, and this is the thing. You can scroll up. We're looking for code, yeah. so we know that is hundred percent one of them. Yeah. So, so we we'd put um, see equal to code. Yep. Um, or Discord or uh, DLL host. We'll have to double check that one. That's fine. Um. I'll get you to close the um, curly brace now, and let's see what happens. Didn't work. Didn't work. So what do you reckon it didn't work? So when, you, when you're writing um, where object state on um, conditional statements, yep. um, basically you have to have um, each... This is, a, this is a new condition, so... Ah, uh, yes. I now... now um, I'm gonna we're gonna write it this way and then we're gonna write it a better way but I just want you to kind of get your head around the process so um, yeah no I, I recall having to do this yep so um, I'm, keep, I'm gonna get you to keep driving when when you had me do that script for um, deleting the specific files yeah yep yep so we're going to write this even better. We're going to write this way faster. Um, Glenn, you're going to like this. One of the um, earlier this week, I simplified a piece of code that took 50 lines and then brought it down to 20. Um, but it was like 50 lines of really overly complicated code. So He's not boasting, by the way. No, that was like, I was so happy. And also, also something that's really, I'm actually really, this is one thing I'm really happy with. I wrote, um, I wrote a function now with, um, so like all my, all my code, all my production code runs logging. So it logs in CM trace format, which is exceptionally good. Um, it's one of the things I'm writing about in the book. One of the things I did today was I wrote, um, functions so that basically instead of log, like it'll take the exact, I'll, I'll say exact same function name because there's still a, um, it's obviously abbreviated with application insights, but what it does, it creates custom events within application insights, and then um, then basically you can actually log directly with that. So you can, if you're logging an error and you basically want to get all the error information, so if you're doing a try catch and you basically catch the error object within the catch, um, it'll actually take all that, basically build out a nice um, event dictionary and then send it up. And it's like, I'm looking at it and it's just like, this is fantastic. It's so, and because everything is actually um, driven in its, um, in, 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 everything is actually caught in its own key value. Now I can write awesome reports. So if I'm looking for a specific error for to do, like for a customer wants to know when something has failed, um, I can literally write the, the report to look for that error. And it's like so much easier than basically looking for hard code strings and then doing like statements. Anyway, so what we've got here is, again, if you're not sure, what are you going to do? You're just going to go look for it. Yeah. So what are we looking for? DLL host. It was there. It, I spelled it correctly. You did? Yeah. It's probably gone. Oh, it is. Sorry. It's there. Okay, sweet. So... Okay, so one thing I'm going to do, we're going to like, we're going to make this better. But before we do that, one thing I personally do, it's really going to come down to a person's taste and how they write it. The thing that I always do is to make things readable, I always um, encapsulate those statements in parentheses. Now, PowerShell is smart enough to know that that's not the case. But when it comes down to super complicated things, so for example, if you wanted to do that um, and um, some other thing. Yeah. Like let's say that the CPU is being, you know, as above fifty percent, then that actually is 
weight like it it it, it the, the logic then makes sense yeah. now if it's just single line you can get away with it but in this instance it makes a little like for me right now that make like that's just really easily readable because yeah. i know that that's a, that's a condition that's a condition and that's a condition right there so so i totally didn't actually point to the screen so you guys so there you got obviously the parentheses here anthony you got that's basically a condition that's a condition and that's a condition so what you're looking at there is basically you've got um three conditions that do um that we are evaluating in this where object now we're going to write this better okay so before we do anything, we're going to, have to put this call this first, so we actually keep that in memory. We're going to call this second. And I want you to write that statement again, but I want you to write it better. Write it better. I want you to write it better. You can write that. Um, literally, we can get rid of so much code. So think about the condition statements that we had. Yep. Yep, yep write it better. Refactor it. So basically, we've got we're just using process name. Yep. So and we're just filtering on process name in this instance, which means we're looking for three values. So rather than actually looking for it's this or this or this, we can just say it's any of these. Does if that make sense? So what we're going to use is the contains or the in. Does uh, that make sense? Because we yeah. had this discussion before when we, we did it did. with the where did, object. Yes. And then yes. um, I ended up looking for like, not um, where I was using the property process name mm. is, well, like code. Mm. All right, get you to drive. Wonderful. So this is, again, when we're refactoring our code that we're basically trying to make it um, even easier to read. So like that, 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 like that's fine. But I'm thinking, well, at the end of the day, though, I can write that in less. Um, and um, let's do it. Like, let's if, if, if it can be written in less and still be readable, then there's no issue. Now, I will need you to make sure that you know which one's what. So, if you, because basically contains is going one way and, and in is going the other way. Now, what do you do if you're not sure? You Google it. No, you jump into the console and you start stuffing around. So this is again, so this is what I will do. If I'm not sure, and don't get me wrong, I I'm like I get mixed up sometimes because I'm just working like like a boss. In the console. Um not up yeah, there. yeah, I'm just going you, this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna like I'm gonna build up a quick array. So I'm just gonna go um one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, I'm going to F8 that in. So what does F8 do in Visual Studio? Run selection. It just runs that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go, okay, one is it won't in work. A. True. Let's go back the other way. A contains one. Well, this is this is the thing. That's false. Yeah. So we know that it's like, this is what I mean. So I'm kind of, I if I need to know which way is what, I'm just going to jump straight into the console and start working it out. Because at the end of the day, though, um, it's, it's um it's easier like it's it's this is this i'm trying to like what i'm trying to do is teach you the process that i do to actually um like how i start troubleshooting if i'm not sure about something i'm going to jump straight into a console and start working out because at the end of the day though you can go to google and google will give you an answer but most of the time if you know that for example the um the conditional operator is in or it's not like or it's something like that. I'm going to literally go straight to the console because I know it's something around there and I'm just going to have a quick fiddle around and I'll probably have my answer in about 30 seconds. Um, it's much easier to do that. So okay, I'm so glad basically... in this case, contains would be correct because you're saying where object, the process name contains one so, of those three. So it, remember, in is... Um, This is the way I always remember it. Does that make sense? It does. It it's it sounds really like really terrible. One to many. So one in many. So in the in this case many it would contains be one. Process name. In many. Because what we're gonna do well, actually, to be honest, it's whatever you want it to do. You can literally say, okay, I want to have the array at the beginning, which means you just then use the, con um, the contain statement. It's a bit like whether you use... Well, yeah, but we are actually calling that um, contains 
Like we're, we've, we're calling the array, which mm. is the command get process, which mm. is building an array. But so, this, uh, this is the thing we've got to remember though. Okay, so if we jump back into here, so we're in our where object right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is if we're inside our where object here, okay, I think you're thinking one step out and you need to start and you need to think one step in. When you're inside the where object, it feels a little bit like JQ, just a little bit more generic. Actually, what's what's JQ? Sorry, I don't know what JQ is. Sorry. Um, so um, when we're inside a where object, yeah. Um, we're actually inside. We're evaluating that specific element. Are we in a one or a many? Uh, we're in a we're in a one. We're in exactly. We're in a one. Anytime we're inside a where object, we're inside a one. Anytime we're inside a for each, we're inside a one. Now, with the exception that basically, if you've got collections on collections on collections, so what I mean by that is, if you've got let's say a two dimensional array, and a great example, this is a two dimensional array right here. So basically, you've got an array inside an array or rayception. Um, then you would be like you're not in the lowest element, you're in this element here. Does that make sense? And then if you wanted to go into those elements, you would, oh, sorry, those um, values, you would then need to go into that. So at this point in time, we're just in this. If we're yep. thinking about get process, our querying JSON objects. Oh, jQuery, yep. 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 Yep, yep. I know about jQuery. Um, so basically, what I'm what, what, so what we got here is distinct from JQ, and there's a much the much older library. <laughs> um, so what we got here is that basically, if we want to simplify this process, remember inside where object, basically um, we're in the one. So if we're inside the one, what does that mean? We're going to have to be using the, the in statement. Well, this is the thing. This is the thing, all right? These both will evaluate. I just want to show you something, yep. all right? So, um, uh, it's greater than... Is that going to be true or false? False. Okay. True. But I can rewrite that to be... Does that make sense? Like... In and contains, they're just the opposite of each other. Yeah. So, as, as if you look at one is greater than two, that's going to evaluate to false. But two is less than one, it's going to evaluate to be false. They're basically just two different operators that evaluate um, evaluate differently. It's the same with one to many and many to one. That basically one's looking on the left hand side as the um it, the the in is looking on the left hand side as the one, and then the right hand side of the the operator is the many. And then if you flip it. You're just using contains. Contains contains the many, and then on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side, it contains the one. Yep. So at the end of the day, though, this is what you can do. It doesn't have. You can literally put your statement wherever you want. So I could say one is um, contains. Um, I could say one um, a contains one. We'll just clear that up. That will evaluate to be true, because it does. Because you have the one on the right hand side, yeah. but I can flip it and put it on the left hand side and say it's in, and say that. Does it make sense? Yes. So I'm just I can flip it around. You can yeah, use no, it interchangeably. Well, what you've confused me with mm -hmm. is when you said when you're in a where object mm -hmm. you're in the one. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so we're, in that case, would you use the in statement or the contain statement? Either or. You've just confused me now. No, okay. So what I mean by that is, okay. So let's 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 step it out. Like we'll break it right down. So if we're inside a where object, okay. Let's 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 actually let's forget about where object. We're going to use for each, right? Yep. Also, Anthony had an answer. Get process where object process name is is called code. Um, no, no, very um, not quite. Um, but. Yeah, it, it, it's you guys will see it and then it'll kind of go, oh, okay. Um, all right, so what we've got here is let's say we've got our array. Um, so we've got, okay, we've got six, element, uh, six items in our, in our array. And it's mm -hmm. not even elements, it's just items. 
Uh, so we're going to say for each. So what does for each do? Uh, for each object? Yep. Oh, sorry, just for each. Well, it uses the count. So for each, um, we'll basically go through each element. <laughs> it's not an element. Um, it's going to go through each value within the array. So it basically will go, it'll start here. Step, 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 yeah, step. So it's count yes, six. so count to six. So if we for, do... For each item in the array, do this. Um, so we can just do a write host and we say, hey, like so. And we can re we can actually execute this and we can see, hey, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So it's just going to step through in each value within the array. So what we can do here is basically, this is what I think you're getting confused because now remember, this is the same as where object, this is the same as a for each object. Okay. The only difference is that we're referencing the current value in that object by calling it A double R. Glenn, you're hundred percent correct. But let me let me and let, let yeah, let me explain this because it's yeah, I'm I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Um Maybe element or value. Okay, okay. We'll use value. Um, so we got our each of our values in 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 here, right? So we're gonna rerun that so we can see. Hey, one yep. to six. All right. So remember, now I want to define um, Bob another array. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go call it one to three. Okay. That array exists in that loop, okay? So, this is what we're doing, okay? This is where we're kind of working out the statement. Um, so, basically, if I say value in Bob, that sounds really bad. <laughs> is that a one, a two, or a three? <laughs> oh man, that's really bad. I totally did not think about that. I'm going to change that to uh, something a little bit better. Um, not. Uh, we'll just call it. We'll just call it. Um, array two. Second array. Um, so what we can do. <laughs> so is in second array. Um, so let's like we're going to break it down bit by bit. All right. So we've declared the array. Mm -hmm. So now we've entered the for each loop the process of the execution will go, okay, what's value going to be? We're, we're in the first, we're in the first um, item in the, or the first value in the loop. What's the value going to be? Um, value will be one. Yes, it's going to be one. So it's going to say, hey, one, it's, it's going to declare, um, it's going to um, declare old second array here. Yep. Um, with one, two, three. Okay. We've basically said value in second array, okay? What do you think that's going to return? No one, worries, Glenn, mate. You one. have a good one. See you, mate. That's going to... Is that going to... Okay, so it's going to return a true or false. What's yep. that going to return? So it's going to return a true or false? Yes, it's either going to return true or false. Um, well, it'll return a true because they're both ones. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Then what's going to happen? It's going to hit this. It's going to increment to the second one. Yep. What's value now? Two. Okay. What's this going to be? Hey, two. What's this going to be? One. It's just going to be one, two, three. I just trick question because basically it's just declaring another array. Like it's yeah. nothing. It's just declaring another way. What's this going to be? One. Remember, it's true or false. Oh yeah, so it'll be false. Will it? Should, no, it'll be true. Okay, so un until it hits four, five, six, it'll be true, and then Correct. once it hits four, five, six, it'll be false. Yes, exactly. So if we run it, you can see true, 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 false, false, false. Yep. Okay, cool. So now we're going to basically take one back. We're going to take a step back, mm -hmm. and we're going to go again. Um, so we've got second array, one, two, three. All right. Let's start again. What's this going to be? One. Hey, one. What's this going to be? One, two, three. It's just going to be an array. What's this going to return? Second array contains value, so it'll be true. 
Say it again. The second array contains X values, so it will be true. Correct. Let's go again. Let's say, for example, let's it, say it'll, it's it'll five. Return the, uh, it'll be false. Okay, at the perfect. End. All right. Now. But that, that's just still the basic logic argument of one, two, three is true, four, five, six is false. Correct. Do you want us to change it? Well, I mean, you could flip the contains to an, um, you know, does not contain. I'm going to completely blow your mind now. Okay. All right. Yep. So we're just working with process name? Yep. Okay. What's this going to be? Uh, it'll be Adobe something rather. Yes, exactly right. It's going to be whatever we, we know, right? Yep. Okay. So the second array is where you declare what ones you're looking for, code. Exactly. Does, that, does this, this make good, sense do, now? Yes, it does. Yes, yeah, exactly right. So we could then go code. We could go... Discord. And DLL host. And if we rerun this, we get a whole bunch of falses and trues. Yeah. But that is the exact logic we are writing. So if we come back to it, I'm just doing that so I can, um, um, Anthony, you can jump in on this one, mate. Um, so now we're on second. Yep. Um, what's that where statement going to be now? Remember, the thing is with the where statement. Without looking at Glenn's answer. Yeah, without looking at Glenn's answer. Um, so very tempting. The where statement. So we don't actually, remember, we don't have to write, put all this right host kind of stuff in yeah. there. We only need to write the conditional logic. That's all we're writing. So what do you think it's going to be? I hate having a good memory. Ah, and... But those need to be strings? Correct. Yeah. They need to be strings. We are yeah. referencing strings. Um, PowerShell will interpret that as, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, so you, we need you were to waiting clear... to see if I picked up on that one. Oh, I'm just, I'm just letting you drive. Like, I'm not going to... Ah, that goes there. So I suppose the other way of doing it would be to say, you list the array and then say um, I want you to write it using contains contains Call it third. All right, sweet. Pay dirt. Does that make sense? For the most part. Okay, this is where this is what I'm. I'm, I'm like when I when I yeah no, when the, I'm stumbling well, around. What I misunderstood mm. was where the process name would sit because for me, like English would say, you're looking for the process name contains. Code, Discord, or DLL. Well, house. that's exactly right. But in, in PowerShell land, um, conditional objects, uh, yeah, it, it, they, 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 they vary. Um, so if we dump our third, we'll have our exact same values. Yeah. Um, that's pretty straightforward. So we're going to step this up a notch. Well, and make it unique. Oh, we're going to make it even cooler. We're going to do something really cool with PowerShell. So... So we've basically done our filtering. We're going to now have a look at the where method and why we use the where method. Um, the where method has, so for example, um, we have an array. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the where method only applies to, excuse me for a sec, um, PS object types, I think, and it also applies to some other types. But it's not, if you have custom classes or anything like that, it won't apply. We have the where method. Guess what? Where method works exactly the same as a where object method. For the time being. <laughs> so, we're going to jump into um, good old Google because we're actually going to need to go through um, some really random things. Um, we're going to need to go through some bits and pieces. So, we have our expression. So, the expression is what we just did, is our conditional yep. object. So, expression that we want to run. The second thing is we have mode. Um, and then the number to return. So we've got these really cool things that we can do here. So we basically have got our default, which is basically what a where object does. It just filters the collection using expression script block. Exactly the same. We can get the first filtered item in the filtered collection, or if a specific count was requested and the number returned. So for example, like the first five. Yeah. So that would so be like the first five, exactly. 300 doesn't matter, but you can basically shortcut that. So rather than having to go pipe select first five, you can just use a where method and then basically go first five. Okay. So again, you, you see what we, you, there's, there's these benefits that are coming here. Same thing with um, last, we can also skip. So we can skip objects until an object passes the expression. So for example, let's say if you think about, um, if we, if we go back to our array here, um, one, two, three, four, five, and it mm -hmm. contains three. It'll only base. It'll continue to skip those um, other ones, and and it'll only display three, after four, three, five, four, five. Yeah. yeah. So if we go back, then we've got until, and then we've got split. So we can actually split a collection into two, placing all objects that pass the expression in the script block filter into the first collection, and we can do it to the other side. Okay. So, we can have a look at some examples here. So, we've got here, we've got running, not running, services where, status is running, split. It looks so weird, doesn't it? It looks pretty weird. Not really. Really? That looks pretty weird for me. So, what we're doing here, so we're just going to, I'm just going to jump back into code because this is something that um, is really, really powerful about PowerShell. Um, it's something that I, like, I only stumbled across the where method about, like, okay, I knew about the where method, like, for a while, but I didn't know about all these other features. And these features are so useful because there's, you can simplify your code. Simplifying code is, like, the best thing in the world. Um, but you still have to write a comment block. Obviously, you have to write a comment block, but I'm saving myself, um, there's, I wanna, I'm going to show you there's two ways you can write this. So, we basically, for example, we've got get service. So we're going to run our services, and what we're declaring here is we have a, a running block, uh, a running, services that are yep. running, services that are not running, yep. and you're splitting it up into those that are running and not running. That's what stop. Yep, and that's what's running. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But the cool thing is, is that before, if you didn't do that, this is how you'd have to do it. Um. This is what I used to do back in the day, and I was like, it's the worst. So I'd have to do this. Um, I'm just going to use where for the time being because it's a good example. What do you reckon this is going to be? Where status is not equal to running. Exactly. That's how you would, I would write it back in the day. Yeah. That will basically return the exact same result. It's just... That is it's way cleaner, yeah. way cleaner, simplified. And so this is the reason why the where method um, for you is like, you don't have to spend copious amounts of lines to do something, especially trying to digest a specific thing where you can just go, I want to split them. I want to split a collection with that and split it with that. And then for example, running and not running. So the where method's so good. Like there is... Um, Happy to help you with Athena. <laughs> no worries, man. Uh, so that's one of the things that I love um, about the where method is that you can do rather than having yeah like you, you're simplifying your code and it's all about trying to get that done anyway that is that so what we're going to do um, we're going to do something now I'm going to get you to drive so what I want you to do with 
all our processes. Hang on, let me just. I think we're. Th yeah, we're on third. I want you to split them. Uh, I want all my Discord, DLL host, and code um, in one variable, and I want it split with old mate in the other. Okay. Um. Do you want me to bring back that example? No, no, no. Okay. If you, like, at the end of the day, though, like, oh, you got your example right there. So, I'm yeah. 135, 36. Just go from that. Sorry, it gets a bit wonky. Yeah. <laughs> it gets a bit wonky, mate. Okay, so we'll call this... Um, split. Well, no, first I'm going to have to declare... So remember, um, we're, we're, do, we're specifying our variables. So let's call the first variable. Remember, the way that the split's going to happen is it's happening... Remember, so if we... The way that we know the split's going to work is we look at the condition. Yep. Um, sorry, is it the condition? The expression, sorry. Yes. So we're going to look at the expression. So the expression here is evaluating the true. So the first response that we're going to get back is the true response. The, 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 we're going to get a collection of the true the true collection. Yeah. Dad joke. Um, then we're going to get the bad, the false, any anything that basically um, evaluates, that, yeah. yeah, evaluates to be false. So basically, um, what do you reckon we call the first? Um, well, first... oh yeah, you probably need a you need a mouse. Hang on, let me just drag that over. You don't have to like lean like a. That's just terrible. So I would go. Um... This will be the last thing for tab A, and then we'll call it quits. I want you to write the full statement out. I don't want you to use processes. I want you to write the full statement out. Ah. Uh. So how are we going to get a list of processes? Well. Get process. Yeah. But that, so, that's why I did the processes equals get process. I want, I want the whole list out. Because yeah. I want you to be able to write something in line for the sake of writing it in line. Yep. Um, so, yep. Now what are we going to do? Okay. But Let's that's... just start thinking about order of execution. Yeah. How's um, that? How are we gonna? How are we gonna um, force um, get process to be executed first before anything else? Bang on. Yeah. Bang but on. Do you go like that? Yes. Okay. Because what we're saying there is here we've got get process yeah, that's yeah. going to get executed first. Yep. And then we, we um the the parentheses is just like bombed ass. It's basically just order of yeah. execution. Then we know that that is it's going to return an object, and that object is going to have the property of where. So. So now keep keep going. So now we're going to use the method. Yep. Oh, it's a method. We're we're actually using a method. So look at um look at line thirty three. See, so see how um, we, oh, yeah, it's a, yeah. now. If you're using the exp, um, if you're using the expression initially, is it expression? Sorry, the yeah, expression initially, um, you can get away with it. You can actually just you can do, you can just put script blocks. Okay. But if you're actually putting something else after it, so if you're putting a secondary argument after it, you need to actually declare each value. So it needs to go inside a parentheses. Mm -hmm. So, so we've got yep, we're process name. So what's the what's the um what's the operator gonna be? You probably want me to use the 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 in. I don't really care, but it's <laughs> yeah. it's either way. Like yeah. well, I mean the, hmm. this way it's simplified again yeah. because they don't have to go process name is equal to this or this or this. Well, it's even to the point where basically when you've read process name, you you've already know um what the value you're looking for. 
So you already have your, your um you already have your object or your property that you're referencing. So you're not looking towards the end of it. You're only it's it's a bit like reading, you know, reading a sentence. You're reading from left to right. Make the code read from left to right. So in this instance, process name it naturally will sit on the left. It's not going to sit on the right. Okay. So that would be a that's perfect. That, that's perfect. That's perfect. What are we okay. going to do on the right-hand side? Um, get process. Get process name is equal to. Yeah. Then what? Um, now, I want you to talk me through what you're doing now. Why did you put a comma there? Well, you said you wanted to split them up into two files. Yep. So, uh, according to what you've shown me so far, you need that there because you're saying there is. G'day, Shane. How you going, mate? There's more to follow. So remember, so we're using a method. Yep. So we've got the where method. This is the first argument in the method. That comma is now denoting what we're going to put in a second argument. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yep. Okay, cool. And so we're just going to, yep, use the split. Uh, that one. And what are we going to do with that method? Nope. Uh that one. Why is that? Well, you're trying to say that the process name in uh, that array and the split command need to be carried out before the where object command. So the where object, so when, we, when we're when we calling a method, methods are denoted by parentheses. Yep. So parentheses have two functions. They basically denote um, methods. Mm -hmm. They also basically denote order of execution. So in this instance, we've got our where method, which is it's just a method. Okay. So, so we're just closing the method. The method. Yeah. Right. So that's the only reason why. Now, the very first set of parentheses at the beginning there that's where we see... That's to say execute first. Exactly. We're actually doing, we're saying to um, PowerShell that we want to execute that before anything else. So we're actually setting an order of execution. All right. You want to hit enter? No. Yeah. All right. Let's see what's in true list. Bang. What's in false list? Of course, uh, I had to pick the uh, the two that come as bang. And that's exactly right. So if we if we go back to um, so for you guys who are watching at home, we're just going to quickly break this down for you guys. Um, let's quickly copy this. We're just going to chuck this in the in the code. So what we got here is we have two variables that we've declared before the equal sign. So obviously, anything after equal sign is an execution, anything before it is a variable. Um, if it's C-sharp, it's an exam. Yeah, it gets, it gets funnier. Let's not go to C-sharp yeah. C yet. So um, what we're going to do here is, um, so we've got a true, for, um, true list and false list. So mm -hmm. we've, de we've declared two variables um, for PowerShell to use. We're running get process. We're ret returning a list of processes. However, we're returning that list of processes first before we're pipe, um, um, sending it to this property. That always has to happen if you want to declare a property um, from a commandlet or any sort of um, execution inside. The reason why is because PowerShell doesn't know which one, um, what goes where. You yeah. need to tell it, order of execution. Uh, because you're not just calling an object, you're calling a command. Exactly right. So it, it, it's if we're calling an object, we can just reference the object because we, yeah. it's already it's already been executed. That's its return state. But because it hasn't returned that state yet, we actually need to tell PowerShell we need to want, we want to run that first. So we've run our get process, and then we've got our we've denoted our um our dot. So we're basically referencing a property or a method, and then inside that we're referencing our where method. Mm -hmm. So inside our where method, we have two values. We have uh, I'm just going to break this down so everyone can see it. We have our first, which is this, which is a script block. Anything inside a curly braces is declared as a script block. Or um, in this instance, it's our expression. So expression is basically telling the method how we're going to do the filter. In this instance, we're looking for the process name, um, dollar underscore, basically references the current object within that loop. So if we make a quick um, review, uh, quick scroll up here, if we go back up here, it's 
each looped item within it. So if this is a ray dot process name, so a very similar loop, um, um, pro, um, very similar logic, dollar underscore is value. So it's just a shortcut for saying value, um, straightforward. Um, from that, we then, dec um, where did I copy and paste it? There, sorry, I was just literally like got lost. So then basically we're saying, is it, is the process name, is it in, in that this array? array? Um, so what we're saying, so in, remember, one to many. Yep. What's contains? Many to, to one. one. So if you're thinking about databases and things like that, one to many, many to one, that's how I remember it. So ins, one to many, contains many to one. Yep. And then you never don't, you, you don't have to ever think about it again. So that's basically, um, that part, that first expression, that always tripped me up. Yep, 100% the same. It always tripped me up. And I always needed to go back to the console. And this is one of the things I always will go back and go mess around in the console. Because if I go and mess around in the console, then I can go and quickly figure it out, come back to it and write the statement. Um, it's easier to go to the console sometimes than it is to go to Google. If you're not sure of a command or something like that, then go to Google um, or go to, you know, get command, get help, that kind of thing. Um, if you're not... Um, but if you're just trying to do something, you can just quickly smash it out. Anyway, so basically we have, um, then we and then what are we doing here? We're telling we're, them, we're telling the mode. We're telling the method it. that we want to split. So if we go back to our um our documentation, SS sixty four just um SS sixty four has been around for so long, and it's for me it's one of those um. It's one of the few um, websites that I have so much confidence in. I can 100% recommend, like, if you need a quick, like, a good documentation piece, SS64 is exceptionally good for it. Um, so I recommend that wholeheartedly. So you can go to TechNet, go to places like that, but SS64 as well. Um, is, so if it's, in, if it's on top of the Google's list, yeah. So basically we're calling this, we're just saying split. So that is the value that we're using. Split will do, will run this specific mode as per se, which is split a collection into two, placing all objects that pass the expression block into the first collection to the, up to the maximum count if one was to provide in the number to return. So that basically says, if we were to say we want the first three, yep. we can basically say the first three. but we're And just, then all the yeah. others would fall outside of that. Correct. Um, and then the rest of the filtered results will be dropped into the second co collection, regardless of whether they match the criteria or not. That actually, actually, something that is um, is a very big gotcha because, um, yeah, some people will be like, oh, yeah, why is it not getting it? Because it's only returning the first three. It's only getting the first three. And the thing is that it kind of does make sense if you think about it, because if you if you're saying get me the first three, well, then what's it going to do with the rest? Like you kind of got to like, yeah, it, it has is. to throw them out. It has to throw them out. Like if you think from an order of execution process, it's just the way that you would write that code would be just get me the first three and then basically dump that out and then the rest of them will just be dumped out. Like like trying to handle the others, like I would just, just wouldn't even know where to start. Like you just, yeah. So anyway. Yeah, you, there'd be no point in having no a, point. a third collection. Exactly. Now let's say we wanted the first three. Um, what do you reckon we're going to do? Uh. That's it. Just the number. Just three. Yep. Okay. It's an integer. So if we look back at it, um, we've got number to return. Okay. So if I was using the mode, then yeah, then I would put in the. So it's just the number to return. It's just three. So it's it's, it's all it needs is an integer. That's it. Okay. So that's fine. Completely fine. So what we've got there is. Um, we've got code, discord, DLL host, blah, but we're just going to get rid of that. But this is a really good example of why we use the where method. Because you yeah. can do so much more than, like, and it requires extra work inside of um, PowerShell to not do that. So if you try and think about that in terms of, um, obviously, saving lines, and that's really what's about. Uh, and then, yeah, you also say select objects. Now, the biggest thing with PowerShell when you're actually writing scripting code is you want to make your code as efficient as possible. This is efficient. Um, if you're using, you know, like, let's say we just want the first three, that would be efficient.
because we don't have to say, um, you know, we don't have to say select object first three, because basically what had happened, if you think about the PowerShell pipeline, it will do that where object, then it will pass it, pipe, um, pass that object output into the, um, into um, select object where it's just doing this all in one. Yeah. So it's just a com combination of that, which means it improves performance because it's not having to put the object back onto the pipeline. So um, that's pretty much that for today. Um, I hope everyone actually enjoyed that. That was a really good, a bit of a, a wonky start, but I think we had a really good solid ending um, and a lot of people learned a lot of different things about um, where objects and how we actually write it. So what are we going to do is not that one, focus on me. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed it. I think that's going to be up. That's going to be it for us for today. I know if you guys all, um, has, is any of the, um, I'm just going to quickly throw it out there. Is any of the guys from TAFE, um, apart from Anthony watching this. So i um, just sent, just send a quick thumbs up in there because I just want to have a quick chat to you guys before we end the stream. That was my baby. Um, what we're probably going to do is, if you are watching and you haven't logged in, um, what we're probably going to do is we are going to kick off a new one um, with terms of uh, new PowerShell 101. We're going to be focusing on predominantly Microsoft technology. So we're going to be going back from, back from scratch. Um, I actually think you probably want to go back to scratch as well because I'm going to be doing things that... Um, you'll probably get a better understanding on when you obviously revision, revision, revision. Yep. Um, so we're probably going to run another 101 class. Um, so the way that I'm thinking of doing this is we're going to get everyone on Discord. Um, it's going to be a video call with everyone on Discord. So everyone's faces will be up on um, in stream. So everyone will be um, visible in stream. Um, and we're just basically going through this process. So um, in terms of... Um, it's not going to be any sort of Skype calls or anything like that because that's going to get really, really tough. Um, but it's just going to be using Discord. So one of the other things I was going to mention is Friday I am planning to stream the presentation. I do have, um, I have upgraded my equipment so now I don't have to, um, I can deal with um, TAFE's, um, Rubbish. Um, TAFE's um, old network. Um, that was something that was a bit of a struggle because of the fact that that hasn't changed since I was there, which was basically when the building was built. Now, admittedly, though, like, it's still, like, it's tried and true, but, like, I've kind of, like, when we do PowerShell meetups, the TV supports Miracast, so I literally just get my Surface and then project to it. So, like, that's... Yeah, but I can't see them upgrading that stuff anytime soon. Well, to be honest, you know how much effort it would take to upgrade that? Yeah. Probably not at all. Well, at the end of the day, the staff basically get surfaces. Um, they got the surface. They can literally project right then and there. Yep. And they can literally walk around the classroom. Um, and you can buy a dongle. Just quickly, I've actually got to go run. Um, I've got to go and run and grab one. Um, you can buy one of these, um, which is basically a. Um, um, one of those, um, basically it's just a, it's a mirror cast unit. So you've got a USB and a HDMI, the USB just powers the HDMI. And what you do is it, it's just basically the, um, you stream, you, I'm um, sorry, you, um, send your, you project to that. Obviously yep. it's got a HDMI projects to the TV. That's it. Yeah. Um, so basically you just need to buy a whole bunch of those, plug them into the HDMI ports. Um, and then you're good to go. So. But um, anyway, guys, I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Um, big turnout today, actually. It was really good. Um, and I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I did. Um, I hope, yeah, is there yeah. anything else on you? Thank you ever so much for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, if you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't. Yeah. Also, one of the things I really want to ask you guys as well is, um, it, oh, sorry, follow, um, not subscribe. That's YouTube. Actually, no, if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe. If you're watching this on Mixer, I don't know because I haven't really used Mixer. Do whatever they do. Yeah, do whatever they do. If you're watching this on Twitch, for follow. So we are simulcasting on three different platforms right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but from here on out, we'll just call it subscribe. Yeah, we're just going to call it subscribe because, yeah, it, most of the traffic's coming from Twitch at the moment. So, um,
from that, um, I really, really encourage you guys to go and follow the Brizpug um, channel, which is twitch.tv slash Brizpug. This is the official Brisbane PowerShell user group um, channel. Also, guys, um, if you're um, from the Twitch... Um, um, I was going to say, if you're, if you're um, on from the sh um, South Bank um, and you basically want to get in touch with me with regards to recruitment, um, or get, um, basically getting in touch with recruitment, um, I do have a gentleman who will, um, is very, very keen to meet with you guys. So um, send me a tweet, um, just publicly tweet me, um, and then we, get, we can get something happening. Or send me a whisper in Discord or um, whatever, um, if you can just get in touch with me. Um, and I can definitely get that process started. So, um, his name's Pablo, fantastic bloke. I've known him for a very, very long time. He's an absolute legend. Yeah, absolute legend. Um, and I really, really encourage you guys to go have a chat with him. He'll be able, he'll be able to um, hook you up with regards to resumes and things like that, how to make your resume look all right. Um, obviously, and being able to actually provide career advice as well. So, um, obviously, I can't provide as much career advice due to the fact that um, I generally work more of a technical space, but there's a lot in terms of out there. Um, there was another question that I remember was mentioned on Monday. I don't know if that gentleman's watching um, with regards to network security and PowerShell. So if you are watching this, um, with re um, or if you know the guy who I'm talking about, I, I don't know his name, so I, I'm sorry about that. Um, he asked me a question about, is it, is it a good idea to learn PowerShell if, if he wants to go down the path of um, network security? I would say yes and no. However, learning Python would probably be more preferred for him because generally they a lot more of their um, automation and programming is done in Python. Now, at the same time, though, Python and PowerShell are both the to-do languages at the moment. So basically, you're not shooting yourself in the foot career-wise if you're going and learning Python. But at the same time, though, if you... Um, yeah, it's either one or all. So um, if you are watching... Um, go check out Python. I think you guys are going to learn Python in that course. Do you guys learn? Is it in the script? We we haven't learned Python yet. Okay, so when I was um, when I was there, we learned Python. Um, I hated it, but at the same time, though, Python's still a fantastic language. Um, it's very very useful. So anyway, guys, I hope you had a good time. Um, if you yeah, have questions, hit me up. Um, yeah. So with regards to um, the one hundred and one for TAFE. So this is probably going to be something that I'm, what I'm going to probably do is we're going to throw up a bit of a Discord channel. Um, actually, give me two seconds. I'm going to do it right now because why not? Give me two seconds, guys. Sorry. I'm just going to quickly do this. I'll publish the um, Discord channel on create a server. Uh, PowerShell 101 training. Um, Use the copy button. Um, I'm just going to paste this in here, guys, so you guys can jump in. So what I'll get you to do is jump into this channel. Um, I just pasted it on the screen. Um, Christian's really hungry. His tummy just went rumblies. So um, jump in that. Um, join that. Um, I'm gonna. I, I literally just created it, so um, we'll just deal with that. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, though, we're going to have, um, we'll have a, um, oh, I'm actually transmitting as well. Um, we're having, um, 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 we'll have, like, I'll create a, like, I'll create a whole bunch of different things on that. Um, so that basically we can, I can create an intake and we can have classes. So we basically can get a whole bunch of different users on that. Um, and then basically we can actually have, yeah, how many different users and we can have an intake. Uh, which would be really good. But anyway, guys, um, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. Um, if you wanted to get onto the new intake, join that channel. Um, join that channel, join that channel, because then we can obviously get that going. Yep. I'm going to actually put that in the slide deck. I've just realized I'm going to put that in the slide deck for Friday. Yep. Um, and I'm going to get other people to... Um, um, I'm going to try and get in touch with um, the previous staff. Oh, sorry, the previous students, and they can get, um, hopefully, if they, because I know there's a lot of desire for those guys as well. With regards to that, it's probably going to move to Saturdays because my wife's going to be going back to work soon from maternity leave. Um, so we're basically going to be probably moving one on ones to Saturdays because I'm going to need to look after Bub from um, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays. So, yeah, we've got, um, that's going to be something that's really going to be, um, um, going to be a bit of a hindrance. But at the same time, though, the lesson's are only going to be 
an hour. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and push it for too long because yep. Christian's getting bored here, um, and you guys probably are as well. So enough for me rambling. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, if you do, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, follow, blah blah blah. Um, also check out the Brisbane Power Show user group, and if you want to be an intake, join that channel. And that's it. That's pretty much that's it. That's pretty yeah. much it. Anyway, guys, enjoy thanks the for rest of your us. day. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, have a great day, Shane. And um, yeah, make sure you get some good brekkie. Anyway, guys, bye for Catch now. Ya.